right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much. If we could just kill that background music, please. Thank you. I'm calling the meeting to order, please, as we continue to make the transition to in-person meetings. Some of the participants are participating via teleconference, video conference, and today's public meetings are also being live streamed from the Port Authority website. Uh, we're going to start today's meeting on a very somber note. We're going to begin the meeting by commemorating uh, and honoring uh, the lives of two Newark firefighters, Augusto Akabu and Wayne Brooks, Jr. Uh, Captain Akabu and Captain Brooks died on July 5th while, do uh, while battling a ship fire at Port Newark. Um, we have um, witnessed this tragedy. It is just a, an awful time. We have uh, obviously sent our love and condolences. Uh, the Port Authority sent a uh, contingent of folks to the wake uh, to meet and condole and embrace the families of both. And we sent a full contingent to the, the funerals. Uh, our hearts go out. Um, we are indebted to the heroes. Um, their loss is our loss, and I ask everybody to stand at this moment for a moment of silence. Thank you. We also want to keep in our thoughts those first responders who were injured during the fire, the ship fire, and we keep them in our prayers. Um, continue on a, a somber note. Uh, we lost recently a 31-year veteran of the Port Authority, Mark R. Bailey, who served as a train engineer for most of his career path. Mark will be remembered by his colleagues uh, as a mentor to the junior path employees. Um, and for those that knew him, can only describe him as a larger-than-life personality who always had this calm demeanor. Devoted family man had two children, Nahima and Salim, husband to his wife, Paulette. He was a community leader in Bayonne. We uh, will miss Mark. And again, ask everyone to stand for a moment, for a moment of silence for Mark. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to transition into um, a protocol and procedure that's been going on for 102 years. We are going to witness the swearing in of our newest commissioner, uh, Winston Fisher. Um, Winston was um, sworn in privately, uh, but we have this ceremonial swearing in. Uh, we're going to first stand for the presentation of the flags, and then we're going to have the singing of the national anthem before we have the uh, oath administered by the vice chair and myself. Please, and America, right, quick, march. early light what so proudly we held at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight hold oh, the ramparts we 
watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet way Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hi, Ben. That was Waterloo. Walk time. Beautiful. Uh, if we can have the commissioner and uh, your daughter Kaya, please. Vice Chair, please follow me. The swearing in. You embarrassed yet by your dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can run the other way. Would you like to hold the Bible for your dad? Vice Chair and I got to other way. Right hand. Face. <laughs> I state your name. Do you solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the Commissioner of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. All right, congratulations, Commissioner. Welcome aboard. You've already contributed much, and you got a sense from today's executive meeting the nature of the topics and the depth and the profile of the Port Authority. Welcome aboard. The next uh, bit of business we have um, is we are here to pay tribute to an individual who does not want us to pay tribute to him. <laughs> Although Michael did think the bagpipes were for him. <laughs> so this is the last place Michael wants to be as much as he has lived this place for seven years and he has been the backbone of the Port Authority for those that know Michael he is not about himself being honored or celebrated or validated um, so this is like his nightmare but I really think and I told him this the other day it's important he be here today because in many ways it's not about Michael in many ways, it's about the contributions of the 8,000 Port Authority employees and the Port Authority employees that have come and worked here for 102 years and those that will come in the future. And I will tell you, Michael, that um, the last six years, and Rick and I have just finished six, our first six years here, you have made it possible. You single-handedly, Michael, um, have made it possible. You have been... Um, that person in the room from the very early morning to the noon to very early to very late at night when tough decisions had to be made from this standpoint from this commissioner's standpoint from this chairman's standpoint whether it be covid george floyd you know when we had the darkest moments you were there to kind of hold us up 
You have been an inspiration, has been uh, our general counsel, our consigliere, mine, Rick's. Uh, you have held this place together. You have been the glue um, that have kept it together. Um, you know, people have written a bunch of stuff for me to read. I don't have to read it, Michael. I can just tell you from my heart what you mean to me and what you mean to the Port Authority, this extraordinary um, individual you're staring at who has left us, and I don't think he ever would have left us, but for his dream job was to be a federal district judge before he goes to the appellate division. <laughs> and on. Um, Michael is uh, amazingly dedicated, amazingly serious, amazingly smart. I will tell you that uh, there are a few people uh, other than Michael, and I would include Rick, to have this intellectual capacity, just extraordinary. Have this well of compassion, extraordinary. Uh, the depths of your commitment to this place, your family, this mission, you have made it really special, Michael. So I can't capture everything, Michael. You know uh, who we are. You've made us. You know where we're going because you've put the foundation in place. Uh, and you're going to leave here today, and you're gonna, we got a couple of baubles for you that you can put on your mantle someplace. But your spirit, Michael, will be here five and 10 and 20 years from now. You have laid those, the groundwork, the tracks for us to be great. You've taken us from a very dark period back in 16 to an amazingly bright place in 2023. So on, on behalf of the board, I'm sure they're going to say things on their own. On my behalf, on behalf of the people of New York and New Jersey in this region, I couldn't say any better. Thank you for all that you've done for us. And we love you. Vice Chair. Show me how to turn this on. Uh, well, as you know, Counselor, uh, you've been a great asset to the Port Authority, but you've been a great friend to me and my family. And I knew when you were being, uh, when you were before the Judiciary Committee, you were going to have your work cut out for you, and you acquitted yourself well. And uh, as the Chairman said, this should be only the first of many important positions that you hold. So congratulations on behalf of all my fellow commissioners. Any other commissioner want to be heard? Sure. Commissioner Cohen and then Commissioner McCabe. Well, first of all, I'm diminishing your accomplishments by even trying to articulate what you have done for this institution. I, I am in the unusual place for this group, I believe, um, in the sense that I knew you before you got here. I was here when you got here. I can attest, just like our vice chair can, I think, oddly enough, I was the vice chair at the time, um, I can attest that, that this institution was going through a difficult period of time, um, and that I, I would have bet, given the array of choices you had in your life at that moment, the professional opportunities you had, that you chose to come here at, at a time when this was not the job it ultimately became, largely because of you, but that you chose and you recognized that this was something where you had a, a unique ability to add an extraordinary amount of value um, and a kind of public service that has really marked your entire career. So I don't want to spend a lot of time characterizing you as a human being because most people in this room know of you and certainly the people up here know of the quality of your character and the extraordinary array of accomplishments. I just want to say to you, thank you, because I was part of that group that first went to talk to you about coming here, and I am just so appreciative that you said yes, and I am so amazed at the quality of work you did for the period of time you were here that not only exceeded everybody's expectations, but exceeded the role so that you really have become the definition, the ideal of a counsel to this institution, and frankly, to any public institution, which is a unique and important job. So a heartfelt thank you. I look forward, I think, as all of us do, to maintaining a close relationship and friendship. And when I need advice, I will say, I'm coming to you. So thank you. Oh, and by the way, he knew, but you know, 
pipe and drum. No, he <laughs> expected a klezmer band. Wow. Is what he had been promised. <laughs> Fascinating. Commissioner McCabe. Uh, Michael, you uh, doing this now in decades are as bright, talented, and as capable of an attorney as I have met. Um, sorry, Chairman. Um, <laughs> and in the public sector, and I want to say what uh, I want to echo what Mr. Cohen just said. For someone of your acumen and your resume, you could have gone anywhere and done anything. But it speaks to the content of the character of who you are and the content of the person that you are. And I've gotten to know you personally over the last several years, which has been my pleasure. But that you chose to put forth your efforts for the public good. And certainly you have uh, demonstrated that here at the, the Port Authority in the short time that I've been here and the short time I got to know you. Beyond that, it just speaks volumes, not to lose sight of where, you're, where, you're, where you are right now. You are a federal district judge. Uh, there aren't too many people in this world who could say that. And you're only scratching the surface of where you're going to be going. And we are all better for it. We're better. No I am. I can certainly say it's better for getting to know you as a person. But to watch how you handled yourself, as you said, Commissioner, you acquitted yourself wonderfully in a very difficult environment. To attain what you have attained uh, just speaks to who you are, where you come from. I know how grounded of a person you are. But as grounded as you are, you are as, a, as talented of an attorney, terrific person, and you deserve everything that you are receiving and have yet to receive. Congratulations, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Chairman. Commissioner Eve. Um, plus one, everything that has been said. Um, uh, I will say it, I know the other lawyers who are sitting up here or in the audience. Um, um, or who may be watching on screen uh, won't mind me saying this, but in my 33 years as a lawyer, I have never, never encountered a finer lawyer. Intellectual firepower, character, extraordinary calm, Never seen you flustered. I cannot believe I'm crying. This is ridiculous. My brother's going to be so upset with me. Um, <laughs> never seen a fire, finer lawyer. And I've had the pleasure of working for two United States senators, including one that is now the president of the United States. I have never, never worked with a finer lawyer and had the pleasure of being served by one with you as our general counsel. As I mentioned, the intellectual firepower, I've never seen you flustered, the character, the calm, but as much as you gave to this organization and during some of the most challenging times at the Port Authority, but also during some of the most challenging times for our country, I literally have never seen you flustered. You were always the calm in the middle of the chaos. Um, but as important as the port has been to you and this family has been to you, I know that what comes first and foremost for you is your faith and your family. And you are as dedicated to those two things, even more, if that could be possible, than the extraordinary dedication that you showed to the port, to us as commissioners, and to us as friends. So. These are what my father and my mother would call happy tears because it's not goodbye. We will be calling upon you for advice and counsel, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, and the port's uh, loss is now, with you being a federal judge, is not just New Jersey's, uh, but the country's gain. Godspeed. Thank you, Commissioner Lees. <laughs> Any other commissioner want to be heard? I'm sorry. Yes, Commissioner Richardson. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so in the lead up to today, I was thinking about you and Maya Angelou's quote came to mind. And I have to tell you, Commissioner Eve, I was, I have, I was actually getting choked up. So I'm going to try to contain myself as well. But um, Maya Angelou's quote goes something like this. People may forget what you said. People may even forget what you did. 
but people will never forget how you made them feel. And, I, and that came to mind as I was walking in the room, and I said, yes, that's it. The way you make us feel, the way you made me feel as a new commissioner, it was so important, that initial engagement, because it carried through the entire time that I knew you. I will tell you how I feel. I am happy for you. And I said that the moment I heard your news, because you have worked so hard and you are so deserving of where you are. I will tell you how I feel, hopeful. And I know that everything's going to be all right because you're a great leader and you left us in good hands with a great group of colleagues. So my friend, you're just scratching the surface. The best is yet to come, but it has been a pleasure to work with you. And I'm not saying goodbye. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Commissioner Richardson. Our Executive Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michael, uh, I've, uh, uh, I've said uh, really almost all I can say to you privately. Uh, it has been uh, an extraordinary experience to work with you, to work side by side with you, to work with you day in and day out. Um, I no need to repeat uh, what the commissioners have said other than to say I have lived, I experienced, and uh, I've seen up close and personal all of the uh, praise and all of the traits uh, that uh, each of the commissioners has, has itemized. So I would just like to say bravo to you for your service to the agency, for your friendship, uh, and for your uh, constant advice throughout the years that we've worked with you. Um, you deserve great success and great good fortune in the future, and I wish you Godspeed. Anyone else want to be heard? All right, we, uh, a couple things we're going to, before we put Michael on the spot, the first order of business, um, an extraordinary order of business, which has only occurred um, seven times before, we're going to be awarding Michael the Chairman's Award of uh, Achievement Award tonight. I'd like a motion from one of the commissioners. So I'll move. Have a second, please. Second. Jim, you want roll call, please? Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwidge? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Eve? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Helmy? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Commissioner Rosado? Yes. So, Michael, one of the four things we're going to give you today is a Chairman's Medal, which has just been unanimously awarded to you. Like I said, there are seven other people that have received this in the history of the Port Authority, and we can't think of anybody more special that deserves that award other than you. So what I'd like to have in an orderly fashion, if we can have all the commissioners get up, because we've got four things we're going to give away. And Michael, we're going to bring you up here, and we have a portable mic, and then we're going to put him on the spot, because we've got a couple, <laughs> couple of things here. If I get the commissioners to join us, we have a, a, a hard hat. Is that microphone, James Allen, is that microphone live there? Oh, good. Dead microphone. Right there. Is there a portable right there? There you go. I'll take it up here. You can just... Phil so Donahue, I know. I'm just yeah. going to say that. <laughs> All right, so if we can have the um, Rick come on up and the commissioners come up. Michael, you come up. So, Commissioner Kamei, if you just, Kamei, can you just grab that uh, helmet? The first thing we're going to do, Michael, is, is give you a ceremonial helmet signed by senior staff and the commissioners, representing all your good work. Um, <laughs> The second thing we'd like to present, Commissioner Eve, if you can uh, get the flag. Oh, I'd be honored to. The flag, which is um, flown over World Trade, I think it was June 6th of this year. It's an honor that you'll be receiving that flag on behalf of the Port Authority, but more importantly, on behalf of the, your legal department that actually procured that flag for you. Okay. Yeah, Vice Chair, could you present this? Now, if we can have you over here, Michael, 
and we have the commissioners line up, and if you can just kind of summarize or <laughs> present that to him, Vice Chair. Michael here, George Fallen, come on in. Rick, come on, join the party. Steve, and then we're going to turn and have a, a photo after this one. Yes. On behalf of the Port Authority and commissioners, we want to present you with the Service Excellent Award. The Board of Commissioners and its Executive Director hereby recognize the lasting contributions by Michael E. Farbiage during his nearly seven years, can you believe it? Seven years, that's not in there, uh, of the dedicated public service to the Port Authority and the Bi-State Region. Since joining the Port Authority in 2016 as General Counsel, Michael brought the full measure of his devotion of legal skills, keen intellect, and unmatched worth work ethic to the responsibility of leading the law department and providing rigorous advice to the professional staff and the Board of Commissioners. During his tenure, Michael fully leveraged his legal skills in the oversight of thousands of litigations, negotiation of new labor contracts for all representative agency employees, developing the factual and legal basis for raising the minimum wage for thousands of airport workers, strengthening the legal framework for many of the agency's regulations, and providing rigorous and detailed advice on the multitude of issues that arose during the COVID-19 pandemic. An ardent proponent of integrity as a fundamental tenant of, for the agency's success, Michael strongly supported a new code of ethics for the commissioners, the complete revision and strengthening of the agency's Office of Ethics and Compliance, and strengthening focus on safety, including the appointment of the agency's first chief safety officer. It is with the utmost appreciation and respect that we honor Michael E. Farbiage for his public service and essential contributions to the Port Authority and the region it serves and wish him well as a newly appointed federal judge. Amen. Photo as well. Oh, we got to put them on. Oh, oh yeah, we'll pin it on them. <laughs> Why did we ready? Right. Not sure I've ever done this. Before. <laughs> if you puncture my heart, that, that could be very metaphorical. It's, it's, it's workman's comp. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know. How, well, if you can't pin it, we'll just hand it. Hold to it up there. there. I think Hold we're just going to have to. All right. Hold it up and grab one photo. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go away. <laughs> not yet. He's not gonna stop. <laughs> Don't go away. Don't go away, Michael. <laughs> There's a card coming. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, so when Huntley Lawrence left us, deserted us. <laughs> we had to find something special, and when Huntley started here in 1985, it was the year that uh, Michael Jordan uh, was the Rookie of the Year. So we said, Michael was the Rookie of the Year. Huntley was our Rookie of the Year, so we gave him a poster, if you remember. And so you're wondering, what's your Michael Jordan poster? <laughs> I know you are. So we couldn't figure it out, so what we, we consulted some folks. And actually, a federal appellate judge gave us the idea. We have a letter, an authentic letter here from Oliver Wendell Holmes, 1900, oh, literally awesome. from yeah, 1900. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. And we will try to read the letter, which may, appear, which may or may not apply to you. It's to a, uh, a doctor friend of his from Harvard, who he corresponded with when he was the Chief Justice in Massachusetts. And he said, uh, Mr. Ernest, you want to read this? You're better at this than I am. <laughs> I have medicated, oh, I have meditated. <laughs> Maybe <five. laughs> Well, he's a doctor, right? He's a doctor. <laughs> I have meditated prayerfully on your kind suggestion that I should deliver the next 4th of July oration. And I think I ought not to attempt it. I shrink from assuming extra burdens at the present. And I have not so definite a sense of having something particular to say as to overcome the fear of unavoidable fatigue. I write to you and not to his honor the mayor because you spoke to me. May I beg you to convince him that I am very humbled by the honor of the very suggestion. Sincerely yours, Oliver Wendell Holmes. And we are humbled, Michael, to present this letter. Awesome. 123 years old. Awesome. Stand and 
Rick, if you don't mind holding this, Michael, come on in. Turn that on. <laughs> Hang it around his neck. Michael, come on in over here. Wow. Both sides. So we can see you. That is awesome. <laughs> we good? Thank you. Wow. You awesome. That's it. Back out. I thought this letter was about how you don't have to give an oration. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we just, no. Uh, okay. Um, I want you to make your way to the podium, Michael. Okay. And address. Uh, we'll hold, we'll hold yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you. Well done. Um, I was literally calling it all about. Uh, yes. <laughs> Is, is Mr. Chairman, is it okay if I just speak from here? Yes. So yeah. If you could project, yes, please yeah. do. Here's, yes. here's your microphone. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll use, I'll yes. use the voice as I say. Uh, I, I love that Commissioner Eve said that she'd never seen me flustered because, like, I kind of feel that right now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit um, Commissioner Richardson, you said something about, uh, you know, kind of how you leave people feeling. Uh, and, and really, I just want to say one thing, which is to all of you, um, it's the entire law department, which is here today, which is so, so kind, uh, and uh, to the commissioners, and to the executive director, and to everyone who's part of the agency, uh, I, I can't tell you how you've made me feel. And, and um, it, it's really kind of you, and, and very nice of you all to say that I, I've given some things to the place, and the truth is, it doesn't compare to what I feel like I've done from all of you. Um, I felt so honored to be your colleagues. Uh, I have felt so honored to serve the public together. And to do this kind of public service, where you serve people by their hundreds of millions, and you serve people just because they're, they're in the same community as you, because uh, you have an urge to do right by strangers, uh, it's a beautiful ideal. Uh, and I'll say one other thing that I felt really lucky about, which is uh, in its core foundational DNA, uh, the Port Authority, I think, is about the idea um, that, that people in states can, can collaborate together in the public service. And that is, that is an honorable ideal. There, there are times in our country that that ideal feels under stress and under pressure. Uh, there have been times in this agency that ideal has felt under stress and under pressure, uh, but not during these years. This has been a golden era to be here, um, and not just because of the incredible stuff we've got to do together, not just because now when you say you work for the Port Authority, people say, oh my god, that's amazing, the new airports, <laughs> what a feeling, uh, but because of how we've done it. We've genuinely collaborated together in a way that uh, is honorable. And um, it, it's been said a lot in this room, but I just want to say it. Uh, a lot of that is down to the chairman and the executive director, who have set an incredible tone of rigor and energy and integrity and excellence, but also of collaboration that has allowed us to get a lot of incredible things done for the public but also has made working here, at least for me, felt like a really deep joy. Uh, so uh, this is really kind, and I'm going to cherish these gifts. I appreciate it greatly. Uh, thank you for all of them. I thank you for the way today felt. Uh, and thank you for the way this, this whole place has felt. It's been an incredible experience, uh, and I have felt so lucky to be a part of it. So proud to be your colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if there's anyone have ideas about retiring after this, we're, we're out of gifts, all right? No Jordan, <laughs> Olive Wendell Holmes, we're done. Michael, thank you again. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it. Uh, the board meeting of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey and its component units is now being called to order. Today's in-person meeting is also being held virtually via uh, video conference with the proceedings live streamed from the Port Authority website. 
On July 12th, the, the Security Committee met in executive session. Earlier today, the Committees on Finance met in public session, and the Committees on Capital Planning, Execution, and Asset Management met in public and in the executive session. The reports will be filed with the official minutes of today's board meeting. The Commissioners also met in executive today to discuss matters related to the purchase, sale, or lease of real property where disclosure would affect the value thereof or the public interest, matters involving the public safety or law enforcement, matters involving ongoing negotiations or reviews of contracts or proposals, and matters related to personnel procedures, and to discuss and act upon matters related to proposed, pending, or current litigation or judicial or administrative proceedings. At this time, we're going to hear from our Executive Director, Rick Cotton, on his uh, monthly report. Rick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to touch on four subjects in today's, uh, today's report. First, I want to offer a comment on the financials that you just heard from the Chief Financial Officer. I want to comment, uh, make some comments on the fire that occurred at our seaport. Uh, take, and then third, take note of the announcement by Governor Hochul uh, concerning progress on our Site 5 development project and Finally, uh, note to the board, key completion milestones taking place with respect to the new Terminal A at Newark. So let me begin by commenting to the board on the agency's strong overall financial performance versus plan for the first six months of the year uh, that were just outlined by our CFO. These results showed net operating income 4% <coughs> above plan, reflecting first strong continuous activity recovery at our facilities, but also reflecting strong expense discipline across the agency throughout the first half of the year. I want to thank publicly all of the agency's employees, not only for their continued dedication, hard work, and excellent handling of the high volume of activity at our facilities, but also for their commitment to managing the agency's expenses with efficiency and dedication. And as always, I want to thank the leaders of the 23 unions who represent two-thirds of the agency's employees. Turning to the Grimaldi fire at uh, Port Newark. On Wednesday, July 5th, as we all know, a truly tragic event occurred at Port Newark. A fire erupted on a car carrier cargo ship, and two firefighters from the Newark City Fire Department died fighting the fire. We took note and mourned their passing earlier in our session today. The fire continued burning until Tuesday, July 11th, when it was extinguished through firefighting efforts coordinated through a unified command led by the U.S. Coast Guard. The unified command structure consisted of the U.S. Coast Guard as lead, the Newark Fire Department, the Port Authority, and Gallagher Marine Systems representing Grimaldi Lines, the owner of the ship. The command was stood up and remained in operation until the fire was extinguished. Measures were put in place by the Unified Command to monitor and mitigate any potential environmental impacts, and specialists performed monitoring around the vessel and the surrounding areas. Following the extinguishing of the fire, investigations were launched into the cause of the fire and all circumstances surrounding the fire by the Coast Guard utilizing the assets of several federal agencies, including ATF and NTSB, and including investigative activity through other public agencies, uh, particularly at Essex County. From the Port Authority's point of view, based on the recommendation of our Port Director Beth Rooney and our Chief Security Officer Greg Erie, the Port Authority will support a regional review of the existing protocols, which were developed by the New York, New Jersey, Marine Firefighting Task Force under the leadership of the Coast Guard Area Marine Security Committee and which includes the Newark Fire Department, the Elizabeth Fire Department, FDNY, and other regional first responders and stakeholders, including the Port Authority. Port Authority stands ready to support this regional review in any and all ways that are helpful. Finally, as part of our agency's preparation to participate in a regional review, the Port Authority is initiating an internal review of all of our emergency preparedness protocols with a particular focus on arrangements in place to address fire emergencies. We are also 
engage in a constructive and collaborative dialogue with Newark Mayor Baraka and city officials about this review. Turning to today's press announcement by Governor Hochul, the Public Authorities Control Board has approved a revised uh, Five World Trade Center project. The project has been a priority for the Port Authority for multiple years, in fact, beginning in the period just before the COVID pandemic struck. The approved development will include 1,200 units of housing, a third of which will be permanently affordable. We applaud the leadership of the governor and of all involved in finding the successful path to move this project forward. When complete, it will be one of the largest sources of housing, of affordable housing in lower Manhattan. Finally, I want to take note of critical events occurring in finishing the phase two at Terminal A at Newark. Full opening will be completed within the next 60 days. Uh, as the board will recall, the opening phase one of Newark's redeveloped Terminal A occurred in January. Our, the final phase of the redeveloped Terminal A will occur over the next 60 days. Last week, the first step towards this important milestone took place with the opening of the first of four lounge spaces. In addition, the second phase of the terminal involves opening 12 new gates, which will bring the total at the new terminal to 33, and 12 new concession spaces, which will continue to feature local, iconic New Jersey sensibilities. As I report to you today, several of these additional gates are already open, and six of the concessions are open. This phase of the final completion of new Terminal A will be fully completed in September, and this will mark the achievement of a truly world-class Terminal A to replace the Terminal A that was outdated and in uh, truly terrible shape. Also at Newark, the next phase in our development and redevelopment of the airport will follow the completion of a master vision plan for the next phases in the full redevelopment of the airport. And I also uh, want to uh, commend the attention of the board to the fact that the procurement of a new air train Newark is fully underway. Mr. Chairman, with that, I conclude my report. Thank you very much, uh, Rick. Any questions or comments from the commissioners? All righty, we're moving ahead. We're now going to provide uh, the public an opportunity to comment on Port Authority matters. This public comment portion uh, will be limited to 30 minutes in total. It provides an opportunity for members of the public to present their views directly to the board, but does not provide for a dialogue. Members of the public wishing to discuss a specific matter with the Port Authority staff are advised to contact the Public Affairs Department. Speakers are asked to comply with the fixed time limit of uh, three minutes. Uh, Jim, we have two written statements. Uh, that's correct. Uh, Sharon Feinsod on uh, Newark Airport and United Airlines issues, and Matthew Bucky's on tolls and congestion pricing. And they'll be attached, their written statements will be attached to their record? That's correct. Okay, we have four public speakers who have signed up. Uh, Tyler Schwartz. Tyler? Tyler? Come on up. Hi. I'm Hello. Paul. I'm Talia Schwartz. Uh, I'm a board member uh, for Straight, Safe Streets JC. Uh, I'm, I'm a re resident of Jersey City. Uh, I use the PATH train. I go into New York City about five, five to six times a week. I'm here to ask for more frequent service and to get an update on the Marion Station uh, and if and when it will be built. We know that mass transit is a critical solution for the climate and for equity concerns. Um, transportation, meaning highways, cars, and trucks, is the number one uh, biggest contributor to pollution in New Jersey. Uh, during commuting hours, the path can move two times the number of people as the tunnel, uh, the Holland Tunnel. So as a mom with two kids who wants a future for them where they can be outside and breathe clean air, I ask uh, that we double down on any alternatives we have uh, to car and, and vehicular transportation. 
Uh, we saw that uh, PATH ridership has not fully recovered um, for pre-COVID uh, times, but I do want to call out that service has uh, gotten considerably worse. Uh, trains are down for repairs, and the frequency has gone down. Um, so I'm here to say that if we invest in uh, more frequent and reliable trains, I expect ridership uh, might return. Um, instead, PATH has cut services. In 2006, PATH was running four to six trains per hour and off-peak. Uh, now we're only running three or four. Um, and we know that off-peak hours uh, PATH has actually rebounded almost 80%. Uh, so when we look at that chart, that includes commuting hours. So we need to invest more in off-peak now that we see what, what trends are happening. Um, as opposed to PATH, New Jersey Transit increased frequency in Hudson County three times in the last six months. And within those months, ridership went up 40%, um, in, and in some cases, close to 80%. So we know that um, there's a way to, to create this virtuous loop. Uh, more frequency leads to more demand, which leads to more funding, which leads to more frequency, and then more demand again. Um, transit research shows that. Um, and in Hudson County, uh, almost 50% of the people don't have cars. So this area is ripe uh, for this kind of investment. Um, OK, I'm almost out of time. Uh, I do just want to call out that when we don't run frequent trains, we are punishing oftentimes the people who make the least amount of money and are working during off-peak hours. So not only do they make less, they have to wait 45 minutes or an hour longer than people who work commuting hours to get home. I would like my public uh, investments, my tax money, to go to helping everyone who lives in the county uh, have access to public transit and not drive in cars to the city, uh, which we know we don't want anyway. So. Um, and then finally, progress on the Marion line. Um, a lot of people need access to transit, even when it's not uh, the best value for our buck immediately. Uh, and we need to make sure that everyone has that access. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Emmanuel Morgan. Uh, Director Cotton, members of the board, um, especially Ms. Richardson, um, who has already shown support for our county's Vision Zero program, thank you. Um, my name is Emmanuel Morgan, and I'm here on behalf of a coalition of safe streets and sustainability advocacy groups called Hudson County Complete Streets to ask you to revise your standards for volume on the, in the PATH system. At the June board meeting here, there was discussion about volume of traffic, and after a question posed um, by Commissioner O'Toole, um, our Director Cotton replied that it's no question that volumes are back and substantially above 2019 levels, um, but that path, path volumes remained at 60% during the week and 91% on weekends of 2019 levels, concluding that there seems to be a, a mode shift to automobile traffic. Um, but I am here today to suggest that this shift is in part due to outdated standards and service cuts at PATH. What we know about PATH is that it is the fifth most used subway system in the United States. We know from U.S. Census data that more women than men ride public transit and that 60% of U.S. transit riders identify as people of color. In Hudson and Essex counties, a significant population of transit riders reside in overburdened environmental justice communities. I'm sure I don't have to tell you about your customers, but I would like to describe my experience as a customer riding the PATH train over 14 years and how that has changed. As a regular rider initially from the Hoboken station for 10 years, I noticed that trains increasingly became more crowded with stampeding up the stairs at the end of the day, mostly during the weekday rush. As I advanced in my career, I had the privilege to eventually make an agreement with my employer that would allow me a flexible schedule so that I could take the train at 7 a.m. or at 10 a.m. to avoid the 8 to 9 rush. This had a significant impact on my quality of life that I know not everyone can enjoy. There is nothing worse, either pre or post pandemic, than being pushed up against other people, especially as a young woman, which I was at the time, on a crowded train. As mode shift continued, and we saw, colloquially, an increase in bike and scooter traffic on PATH, not to mention strollers, suitcases, conditions only became more crowded until finally, suddenly improving in 2020, alleviated by the pandemic. Since the pandemic, everyone is still understandably cautious and nervous about crowding. Thus, I'm here to ask you to reassess and revise your standards for volume on PATH. Our standards should not be a return to 2019 conditions. As re our standards should be 
should be increased demand. As residents of communities with significant transportation problems that include record traffic crashes, commute times, congestion, and pollution, we are certainly looking for a return and improvement in ridership volumes because the dignity and equity of transit riders should be a part of the measure of the authority's success. And if that doesn't sway, may I continue? I'm out How of How much time do you have, Lou? We try to keep it to three minutes if you don't mind. Like 30 much, seconds. Sure, go ahead. The transportation sector, as we know, is the largest contributor to the climate crisis. This is according to the EPA and the Department of Transportation. We also know um, that, um, although we know that the answer is public transportation, I have oddly heard that the PATH division of the Port Authority referred to as the so-called revenue-losing division of the system. And yet, from the perspective of climate activists and Families for Safe Streets, PATH is the crown jewel, your crown jewel. Of the, of the Port Authority. It is an essential life-saving system that is saving us all from greenhouse gases and air pollution, as well as getting us to work every day. From this perspective, I hope we can all agree that we want to reduce our greenhouse gases. We should be investing in PATH and actively working to make, to make ridership, to make riders comfortable and to make service efficient. So as the federal government invests in safe transportation systems, as our local county and city officials invest in Vision Zero, the evidence of which you can see right outside this building, we ask you, our Port Authority leadership, to please consider the communities that, you, that need you most and to consider your legacy as we embark on efforts to address climate change that will require Herculean, World War II era-like levels of cooperation and collaboration. We won't get the volume um, and demand that we need on PATH without respecting the dignity of transit riders and improving the PATH system. We need increased service on weekends and evenings. We need uncrowded conditions. We need ADA accessible stations. We need 24-hour bike access. We need reliable service updates and more. And we want to know how will the Port Authority address increased demand from the thousands, tens of thousands of new new units, residential units going up in Journal Square and Harrison throughout Hudson County and the the increase in demand from Manhattan congestion pricing. Can you wrap We're up? ready to work with you. Let us know when you are. Thank you. Deborah? Hey. Is your son here today? No, he sends his, he, uh, I hope I can say this quickly. Yes. Right. Christopher sends his regards. He apologizes, but Today, the Transit Riders Council meeting, which he's an executive member, is meeting exactly at the same time. But we did bring another family member. Stand up for a second. That's my cousin. Remember I told you she's shorter than me? I don't remember that part. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Emma, how you doing? Tell, tell Christopher so we said hello. We, well, oh, he has one more thing he asked me to tell Yes. We thought your tie was very nice. Was? Was last month. Remember, you were being scolded? Yeah, I was being scolded. Oh, it was yeah. not correct. Yeah. It was not right. But my son said the next time we come here or we meet you uh, across the river, he's going to show you the kind of tie he uses. It's cool. It's called a zipper tie. I will take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, thank you very much for uh, Thank you. Allowing me. Okay. Yes. All right. Yesterday was a very big, important day, especially for my family. 33 years ago, President Bush, or I call Papa Bush when people don't understand what I'm saying, signed into law the American with Disabilities Act. As a child who was born to a parent with disabilities, it was a wonderful thing because my mom, as I've said before, my mother and I, I was taught how to travel in inaccessible train systems. So we're very happy. Of course, I'm going to be leaving you this. Chris made these signs. Okay. We, okay, what we're asking for this. I would love to see on the men, New York side work with the MTA partner, however you got. We need to make those stations. I'm not talking about the one at 33rd Street or in the new where, at the World Trades. I'm talking about in between, they're not accessible. And we need to make them accessible too. The other thing is, please, please let the press know that when at Long Island Railroad's Jamaica Station, I'm not talking about the elevator that goes into the subway. I'm talking about the Long Island Railroad elevators. They keep telling me that it's the MTA. I said, no, I'm sorry. It's the Port Authority of New York and Pennsylvania. And, sorry, Pennsylvania. Sorry, I'm exhausted. I apologize. Don't forget New Jersey in that. No, 
New Jersey is just as important because when I do go to, when we were going to Atlantic City, we used the trains and stuff going in and out from Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But we want, please, the escalators need to be fixed, the elevators. It is no fun. As remember, I told you when they took uh -huh. me down because they couldn't bridge me. I don't want anybody else to go through what I did. It's not right. It's, it's horrible. I'm lucky that I didn't pass out from the smell. I can't blame them. They do the work down there, but I don't want to, as a passenger, go there. So please, also we're asking if you would make, I under, you can't say this now, but please think. We, if you know there's a video for Omni, stands for One Metro New York, Yes, I'm the woman that's running around with the there. And yes, my hand is all over the, because the Omni is a better system. Because the reason I brought my cousin, and I'll make this quick, she has hand tremors. Now because of Omni, I don't have to swipe for her. She taps. So what I'm asking is let's in, make for next year's 8834, you're more accessible. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. I'm here. Appreciate it. I kept, please remember to tell next month, next time you see him that I kept my word. I handed it. We'll see him in September at Thank New York. You Thank much. you. Appreciate Thank Cousin Emma for coming. Oh, Philip Plotch. Philip, last speaker. Good afternoon. My Good name afternoon. is Philip Plotch. I'm an NYU fellow, and I'm the principal researcher at the Eno Center for Transportation. First, I'd like to just say thank you to all of you for your public service. I appreciate how much work is involved in all the roles that you have. I have a summer reading suggestion for you today. The University of Michigan Press just published my book. It's titled Mobilizing the Metropolis, How the Port Authority Built New York. Um, you have copies? <laughs> <laughs> Autograph. Autograph copies. <laughs> so the word mobilizing in the book's title has two meanings. First, it refers to your mission to improve mobility by air, sea, and land. And second, it recognizes how the Port Authority has identified problems, come up with creative solutions, and then mobilized public support to implement its plans. I'm delighted that the University of Michigan Press was able to get a grant to make the book open access so that students and others can read it online for free. You probably know the Port Authority was the very first public authority in the United States, and now there's more than 35,000 copycats that provide a wide variety of public services. Some are small, like the East Orange Parking Authority, and then some are huge, like the New York City's Housing Authority. There's a lot that every public authority and every public organization can learn from the Port Authority's history, both from its great accomplishments and its epic failures. There's a lot you can also learn about the Port Authority's history and how it pertains to the Port Authority's future. One thing that's pretty obvious is that when New York and New Jersey have worked together, they've accomplished some extraordinary things. It's disappointing, though, when our two states don't work together on solutions to regional problems like what's going on with congestion pricing right now. The book offers recommendations for you so that our region can continue to thrive and to prosper. And if you get a chance to read it and you want to learn more about the lessons that are in the book, feel free to contact me, Philip Potch, you know, Center for Transportation and NYU. Thank you, Philip. Sure. Okay, we'll now proceed with the voting of items. There are no other uh, speakers, Jim? That's correct. Great. As chair of the Committee on Operations, I will now present several items under the committee's purview. The first item authorizes an approximate seven-year lease with the Lufthansa airline to provide for its continued operation of a passenger lounge in Terminal B at Newark Liberty International. As part of the, of the new lease, Lufthansa will invest a minimum of $7.5 million to refurbish and expand the passenger lounge. Prior to making uh, the motion, I ask the corporate secretary if there's any recusals. There are no recusals. Any comments or questions? Uh, motion, please. So Can moved. I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwage? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Eve? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Helmy? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. 
Uh, Commissioner Rosado has filed her affirmative votes. Great. All the votes are in order. The item has been approved. The next item authorizes a lease supplement with Atlantic Aviation to extend its current lease at Teterboro for a 20-year period. Under the supplement, Atlantic will invest a minimum of $63 million for improvements to its leasehold, including demolition of a hangar th of Hangar 3, which is over 70 years old, and replacement with three new modern energy-efficient hangars. As part of the supplement, Atlantic has also agreed to make certain sustainability improvements, including lead silver, sustainability plans, and greater use of electric ground uh, service equipment. Prior to making a motion, I ask the Corporate Secretary to note any Commissioner recusals. There are no recusals. Uh, any questions or comments on the Commissioners? I have a motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwage? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Eve? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Helmy? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Commissioner Rosado had... She's filed the vote. Right. Uh, as the votes are in order, this item has been approved. Next, we have an item that authorizes a 39-month extension on a lease with JHR Realty Company uh, for the Port Authority's continued occupancy of the Jersey Avenue Automotive Maintenance Shop and Central Warehouse Building in Jersey City. Prior to making a motion, I ask for any recusals from our Corporate Secretary. There are no recusals. Any comments or questions from the Commissioners? Motion. motion. Second, please. Second. Um, roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwage? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Eve? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Helmy? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. And Commissioner uh, Rosado has filed her affirmative. Great. All the votes are in order. The item has been approved. Uh, there being no further business, I move to adjourn. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting's adjourned. We got a hand truck to help Mr. Farbiage with his gifts on the way out. <laughs> Thank you all.